Arr, arr, arr. Upgrading to more power in my wife's 2020 Forerunner. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. <laughs> Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and today we're going to uh, do a battery swap. We're going to take out the uh, the Toyota factory default uh, flooded battery that was in my wife's 5th gen uh, 4Runner, and we're going to replace it with a much bigger, much more capable uh, AGM, absorbed glass mat battery, and we're going to use the Rago Fabrications new stainless steel battery uh, mount as well. So that's what we're going to talk about today. This is all part of the project to put a ham radio into my wife's car. She's graciously allowed me to do that. I'm going to be putting in the Yaesu FT991 Alpha in there, which can do HF and UHF VHF. And I uh, wanted to have, uh, of course, good, strong power and want to make sure there's plenty of power for the vehicle itself. We are eventually going to look at putting in a dual battery system for this uh, car. But for right now, I wanted to upgrade that, that old school flooded uh, battery. So what I want to put in here is what I've uh, been using for a while now in my Dodge Nitro that uh, you've seen uh, some install videos and in, in, in various uh, pictures and videos and things. Uh, with my radios, I have two radios in there, the FT891 and the uh, ICOM ID5100. And I've had the uh, the X2 power batteries in there, the um, AGM style. They're a dual purpose battery. Uh, they were great for starting. Have had no issues over the last few years uh, through winters and through the heat of summer and various things with those. But they also have uh, a decent amount of capacity for utilizing things, uh, accessories and things, and uh, a radio like ham radio. So I want to put uh, an AGM in here. This is a Group 31 size battery. Uh, has uh, uh, a good amount of capacity to it, and uh, it's pretty big, pretty heavy. So uh, fortunately, there's enough room in the factory location for the 4Runner to uh, to not only put a, a, a newer uh, starting type battery, but then also over on the passenger side, back by the firewall, there's actually another great spot where you can put in a secondary battery. And we're probably going to look at doing that uh, uh, maybe a little bit later this year, in fact. So this is the battery we decided to go with uh, two ports. Now, one of the issues with some of these other brands of batteries, and, and this is something uh, you really want to watch out for. If you'll notice here, the terminals are just about center of the battery. Uh, the, the default battery that came with it and a lot of batteries will have the, the terminals pretty close to you know the top edge or the bottom edge, however you want to look at it, but pretty close to an edge, um, even on the side if they're a, a terminal post. This one, they're, they're not quite in the center. So the default uh, battery cables weren't going to reach. Uh, there's very little room, at least in the 4Runner, to, uh, to be able to, to reach you know, a, a different uh, post location. Uh, so I ended up having to buy some heavy-duty extensions. Uh, I got these on Amazon and also from uh, Napa Auto Parts. Uh, the cable extensions from Napa and the uh, plus and minus terminals from Amazon. And you just screw the two together. Uh, and if you have a regular terminal style, of course, that's how those, those cables come is for the terminal style. But then you can get those post extension and put those in there. So I got the post extensions um, after I took a look at the situation and uh, lugged around the 75 or so pound battery in and out of her car a couple of times and realized um, that although the battery was going to fit in the new tray, the, uh, the, the factory cables just had, had no hope <laughs> of, uh, of reaching that. Uh, so I ordered these. Didn't take really all that long for them to uh, to come in, and uh, are so far working out great. We'll see some pictures of those. Gives you plenty of extra room to uh, to mount those and mount the battery, and uh, and then work with things uh, with some some flexibility as uh, as you may want to if you're going to upgrade the battery. So uh, what we're going to get into in the next section is looking more at the battery and then the uh, new battery box, stainless steel battery box from Rago Fabrications. So we'll bring you folks right back. 
All right, so the battery we decided to go with, the X2 Power Group 31 uh, AGM battery. Uh, it's a dual uh, post uh, style battery. Again, you can see how the, the posts are, are kind of in the center of the battery. So you really have to take a look at your vehicle and the kind of um, length on your, your battery cables. Is there any uh, extra flexibility if you were to change out a battery to uh, maybe a bigger one, different little different size and shape of one? Uh, or you may have to get extensions like I did. Uh, I like these batteries. Again, I've had, uh, I've had a, a smaller one of these in my vehicle, the Dodge Nitro, and it's worked out great for several years. In fact, I'm on my second one. Uh, my vehicle's a 2011, and I've never had any problems. Never had any problems starting, uh, running accessories for a little while. Nothing extreme, but uh, it's worked out great. 100 amp hours, uh, 220 minutes of uh, reserve capacity. Uh, plenty of, of cranking, um, 1150 cold cranking amps. So it, it's got a really good capabilities to it. Uh, should handle uh, cold weather and, and hot weather just fine with plenty of capacity. Um, quite a bit bigger than that, that flooded uh, so-called 65 amp hour battery that was stocked from Toyota. Of course, starting batteries are not at all good at running loads for any length of time. So uh, this was one of the first upgrades I uh, wanted to make to the vehicle and uh, we've now of course got that done so a big part of the project was also we were going to need a new battery box because the original stock battery was quite a bit physically smaller than the new uh, group 31 uh, x2 uh, and so after looking around i decided to go with the rego fabrications uh, stainless steel battery box now i've uh, got the dash mount uh, from rego fabrications we had a video on that earlier in this series and they've got a lot of really nicely made accessories. Now, they do tend to specialize in Toyota, Tacoma, and Forerunner and Tundra and things, uh, FJ. Uh, but they've got some stuff for a few other Fords and Chevys and things as well. Uh, and there's other custom shops out there. So you can certainly take a look and see what's going to work uh, best for your particular vehicle. Uh, again, for the, the Forerunner, they had lots of accessories. And their, their stainless steel battery box looked really nice. Uh, so I went ahead and got that. Didn't uh, you know bother to getting it powder coated or anything like that. And I also got a new set of J hooks. Now I ended up being able to reuse the factory J hooks just fine, uh, but I got the the uh, some new ones just in case. You know you don't want to get part way through a project and then you're missing you know your J hooks from the factory are too short and you have to get longer ones anyway. They're not very expensive. I went ahead and got those and um, uh, may send them back or may just keep them and, and use them for something else down the road. But the fabrication of the dash mount uh, powder coated and then this battery box these are the two things i've purchased from rego fabrications uh, fit and finish are really nice uh and and the fit to the battery was perfect you know it, it wasn't way too big or way too small it was a really good fit for the group 31 battery uh it fit into the location in the uh in, in the forerunner just fine we'll see that i did make uh, uh, one minor uh modification uh, in the vehicle itself just to Make sure things are going to be good, but yeah, the um, the, the fit and finish are, are excellent, and uh, it seems like really nice products. And so I've only got those two things from them so far, but uh, uh, with this vehicle, we may may end up getting one or two more things from them. And it's always nice to support uh, a nice family-owned business um, locally if you can, but you know, nice family-owned business and um, and a U.S. business as well uh, for that. So just a couple of shots here showing the new box. Uh, again, it's nicely made. Um, the no uh, excessively, uh, you know, sharp corners or or, or or really bad welds or, you know, sharp uh, things poking out <laughs> to puncture your battery. Uh, again, the battery fit almost perfectly for this. Uh, the base unit, the the top cage that comes across there, and the the hardware and everything is included. Uh, again, it's a really nice setup. Uh, you know, not super inexpensive. Of course, uh, the battery wasn't either. It's a, definitely a step-up style of battery. But uh, stainless steel and should last more than the life of the car, certainly. So, um, you know, there's times where you may want to save money on something. Uh, and then there's other times where you may, may want to make sure you're getting a very good high-quality product. And uh, for this, I decided uh, I was okay spending a little bit of money on a nice full stainless steel product like this. Uh, depending on the battery you choose the vehicle you have, you may not even need a new battery box or anything. But uh, again, this was a, a, um, a pretty major size and capacity step up from the flooded lead acid battery that 
was uh, stock from Toyota with the uh, with the Forerunner. Installation was actually very easy. You just take the old battery, and there's just a, a kind of a plastic tray. It wasn't even a metal cage or anything that was holding the old battery. Here in this location, you can see. You just take the old battery out, uh, move the J-hooks out of the way, uh, took the little plastic piece out. This one pretty much slipped right in. Now, you can see that piece of foam I've put in there. I moved that... that uh, uh, air conditioning hose out of the way a little bit it wasn't touching but with vibrations and things I just decided to put a little bit of, uh, of padding on that uh, and then here you can see uh, the extensions on there we also have a negative terminal uh, you know quick disconnect sometimes it's nice to reset the uh, drive computer so a uh, pretty simple project uh, take a look at your vehicle take a look at what you currently have do some research take some measurements maybe and upgrading your battery shouldn't be all that difficult and uh, may help you from getting stranded and help you enjoy your equipment when you're out. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Carmel Amateur Radio Association, 73.